WBBM FM, Chicago. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Has the one thing about the American, everything he's a do, he's a do quick, fast, a hurry up, like we're eating. I'm a thinking when American eats, he's open up his mouth only one time for a whole meal. <laughs> Has they even got a special inventions that let you eat the fast? Like one big American invention that lets you eat the lunch in two minutes. That's right, it's called the hot dog. <laughs> And then if America's very hungry and he's got more time, he's eat what's called a hamburger. This takes maybe four minutes. <laughs> Come on, Mamma Mia. American, he hates to waste his time eating, and he would be very happy if he could be and live like his car. Fill up once a week and be finished. <laughs> but the reason I write to you all this, Mamma Mia, is because maybe I'm trying to be too much like American. I am eat the fast, and I'm feel sick. I'm not able to sleep in the night, so I'm going to go next door to my country, Mano Pascual. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pascal. Hey, Pascal, I, I want to ask you why I'm kind of sleep in the night. Oh, no wonder you got those little dark circles under your eyes, little cabbage puss. <laughs> I'm got a shackles? You know? Yes, also you got a blue puffs on the top of the cheek, your eyes, they bloodshot, and even that banana nose, it looks like it got up on the wrong side of your face. <laughs> Pasquale, you think I'm a look terrible, huh? Yes, but it's all gonna change if you marry my Rosa. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna do it, then I'm gonna feel it terrible. <laughs> so please, Pasquale, I'm, I'm coming to you for advice for sleep. Well, Luigi, you come to the right person. I know more than any doctor. Now, tell me, you, you tried the counting the sheeps? I'm uh, used up a five stock yards. <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe you should have tried counting the meatballs and jumping over breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Pascal, is it not funny to me? I'm a sour little man in the head. We've got to try to figure it out. Now, tell me, you sleep with the windows open or closed? Well, what's this got to do? Oh, plenty. You need air. I want to read someplace. Uh, you got to leave your windows open uh, six inches from the top, uh, six inches from the bottom, so the oxygen can uh, sneak in. Oh, that's it. Uh, then you mean open the top and the bottom for the oxygen? Sure. That way you get the oxy from the top and the gin from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, well, uh, well, well uh, maybe I'm uh, going to try this, uh, Pasquale. Sure. Of uh, course, uh, there could be other reasons, uh, too. Uh, do you uh, eat uh, before you go to sleep? Uh, that's uh, what I'm uh, taught. Uh. What? Sure, I'm eat too fast before I'm going to sleep. Oh, no, no. You know that. Uh, you eat uh, light or heavy? Light. Well, that's your trouble. You should eat the heavy. <laughs> heavy? Sure, ask any doctor. 
You eat a light, there's nothing to hold you down. You flop around on a mat. <laughs> but if you eat a heavy, there's a plenty to weigh you down, and you lay there like a rock. <laughs> Well, Pasquale, I'm afraid that you know, give me no help. I think maybe I'm going to my next school class and, and, and they're going to help me out. I doubt, Sir Luigi, that could have never help you because you're suffering from a bad, bad, psychological reason for sleeplessness. <laughs> sleeplessness, Nessie? Mm. <laughs> well, what's that, Pasquale? Guilty conscience. You mean, you mean I'm done something wrong? No doubts about it. But what, Pasquale? What, what I'm done wrong? You didn't marry Rosa. <laughs> stop it, Pasquale. Stop it, please. Stop it, the Rosa talking. All right, all right. No more Rosa talking, no more wedding talk or nothing. Forget everything. We're going to talk a plain talk. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, how's about you and me going to the movies tonight? Huh? They got a nice picture with a Judy Holiday. All right, Pasquale. What's the picture? The Marion kind. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do, no, Pasquale. you going to be with the Judy, I'm going to be with the Jumbo. Listen, Luigi, what do you got to lose? Make the big test. Marry my daughter and see if that don't stop your troubles. No, no, Pasquale. What happens if, if, I, if I'm a married Rosa and I'm still can't sleep in the night? Sir? Well, then at least we know that wasn't the reason. <laughs> <laughs> then we can look for something else. Yeah, but, but, but what's going to happen with Rosa? Well, you could still keep her around for little things like uh, cooking your meals or having your kids. No, no, Pasquale. I'm better off not to sleep in the rest of my life. All right, Luigi. You made your own bed, but now you can't sleep in it. Look on yourself in the mirror how you look. How many hours of sleep did you get last night? Five. Sometimes I'm asleep at four. Sometimes it's only three. Sure. Then is it going to be two, then a one. And then you're going to uh, sell your bed, to grow a tail, and start taking a cat naps under the table. <laughs> no, no, Pasquale, please. No, don't try to scare I'm me, I'm not Pasquale. trying to scare you. Is it just that I can see a terrible finish for you? Listen, I once had a customer, Joe Maloney, had the same trouble. Once he couldn't sleep for 28 days, the doctors had to send him to Africa for the cure. Africa? That's where he got bit by the terrible tzu fly. Uh, tzu-tzu, but, but, but how's it that they cured him? The tzu flies flies give him a sleep in a sickness. Mamma mia. That's pretty terrible, eh? Luigi, believe in me, marriage is your best bet. Well, take your pick, Rosa or the tzu fly. What's your answer? Well, I'm a don't know. I'm a never met the tzu fly. fly. <laughs> Goodbye. All the time you are, you never saw me in like All right, class, let's away. come to attention. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Please, so I'll call the roll. Oh. Mr. Basco? <sighs> I'm a hearer. Uh, Mr. Basco, you will do your sleeping at night at home, please. Well, I'm a am try the Miss Spalding, but, but it's impossible. What? Ach, let him yawn, Miss Spalding. It ain't often Luigi gets a chance to open up his mouth in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, smile, fellow boobles. That was terrible, Witty. Well, anyway, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Please, let's get on with the lesson. It's a little late. Uh, today we are studying irregular verbs. Mr. Horowitz, name the three principal parts of all irregular verbs. With pleasure. The present tense, the past tense, and the past participle. Well, that's very good, Mr. Horowitz. This I won't argue with you. <laughs> All right, we'll study some verbs now. Mr. Olson, take the verb to drink. Present tense? I drink. Mr. Basco? I drank. Mr. Schultz? Uh, I, uh, I have... Uh... Drunk? Oh, no, never touched the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of louder. <laughs> Please. Uh, let's take the verb sleep now. Mr. Schultz, begin. Yeah, I sleep. Mr. Olson? I sleep. Mr. Basco? I can't sleep. <laughs> uh, Mr. Basco, what are you talking about? Just say I have slept. Maybe you, but not to me. <laughs> oh, good heavens. And Pasquale says I'm not going to sleep unless I'm going to let the genie from the window. I'm going to go to Africa for the tutsus who fly. <laughs> Luigi, are you for shimmers? <laughs> oh, quiet, all of you, please. Mr. Basco, you do look pale and tired. Don't you feel well? Well, I'm, 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 I'm just a kind of, kind of sleeper, Miss Pauling. That's all. 
Ach, that's just insomnia, Luigi. I wouldn't lose any sleep about it. <laughs> Luigi, take my advice. Tonight when you go home, take a hot bath and a little hot tea with lemon before you go to sleep. Ah, that's going to help me, Hadowitz. You'll sleep like a baby. And you'll know how a baby sleeps. Up and screaming every ten minutes. <laughs> I got, I got, I got the remedy, Luigi. You take, take half a dozen detective stories to bed with you and just keep on reading. Hey, Mr. Joseph, then I'm, then I'm going to fall asleep. Please. I guarantee by eight o'clock in the morning you'll be dead to the world. <laughs> uh, Luigi, uh, there is only one way to woo slumber. Well, I has that, the Olsen? Concentration. You, you close your eyes and let your mind become a total blank. Then you just let yourself Drift into the arms of Morpheus. Impossible. Luigi's got a single bed. <laughs> Smile, Luigi. Sleep, sleep ain't so important. Look, look at Napoleon. He only slept three hours a day. Hey, Mama, Mama, me, is this a true, Miss Balding? Well, according to history, it is. Napoleon has only slept for three hours a day. I'm a wonder why he's a did this. Josephine used to hog the blanket. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Didn't Thomas Edison sleep only two hours a day? That's what they tell us, Mr. Horowitz. Edison on, on, on only two hours a day? Yeah, yeah well, with, with Edison it was different. The electric light kept him away. <laughs> Stop worrying, Luigi. Sleep ain't so important as long as you are happy. Oh, oh Schultz. Medically speaking, you are mistaken. After the day's activity, the human body needs to recuperate. Yeah, but still, yeah, also, also uh, consider the immortal words of Shakespeare. To sleep, perchance to dream. Hey, there's the rob. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Turkish bath. <laughs> uh, look, Luigi, if it bothers you so much... Then you got to do something about it, that's all. I suggest you go to see a doctor, Mr. Basco. Certainly. Now, when did you have your last checkup, Luigi? I don't know, I don't remember. Mm. Uh, what was the doctor's name? Uh, well, his name was uh, Salvatore Di Lorenzo. <laughs> but go back and see him again. Go tomorrow. I can't, Schultz. So why not? His office is in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one good reason. <laughs> Miss Barling, you, you, you think I'm, I'm, I'm sure going to see the doctor? Well, I should think so, Mr. Basco. Insomnia may be caused by some physical disturbance as well as mental, and only a doctor can give you the facts. Uh-huh. That's what it is, uh-huh. Then, then what the doctor is going to do with me? Stop worrying, Luigi. is not going to hurt you. Of course. But what, what can he do to you, Luigi? Can he bang you on the knee with a hammer? Can he take out a few drops of blood to analyze? Can he stick a needle in you? Well, can he, Schultz? Well, certainly. Believe me, if you don't need a doctor when you walk in, he makes sure you're going to need him when you walk out. Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that may be a help to your success and popularity. Make it a regular custom to chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, at least a few sticks every day. You see, regular daily chewing is an easy, pleasant way to help keep your teeth clean and bright, your smile attractive. Then, too, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum freshens your mouth and helps keep your breath sweet. So you naturally feel more sure of yourself at work and in your social activities. Yes, friends, bright, attractive teeth and mouth freshness are important to all of us. So make it a point to chew refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum, at least a few sticks every day. It's a wise thing to do, and besides, you'll enjoy it. Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma me, I'm a come home from school last night, and I'm a decide I'm a try to sleep. So right away, I'm drank a hot cup of tea. 
But is it no help? Shall I start to drink in the coffee? But that's no help me to sleep neither. Finally, it's come in the morning, and I'm, I'm thinking, maybe I should go see a doctor when suddenly my door is open up. Well, how's it, Mr. Night Owl, this morning? Hey, you looking much better, little banana nose. I do? Yeah, I don't see those blue cycles no more. Ah, oh, it's a good. They turned to black. <laughs> Mamma mia, well, well, that's a set that I'm, I'm going to take my class advice. I'm going to go to see the doctor. Eh, might be a good idea, Luigi. Tell me uh, what kind of a doctor you're going to see. Huh? Oh, just, just the plain of doctor, Pasquale. Oh, what a big green horn. Don't you know in America they got a specialist for everything? Specialist? Sure, they got a hand doctors, a foot doctors, a eyebrow doctors, a fingernail doctors. <laughs> and if you don't know which thing hurts you the most, you go see a witch doctor. <laughs> What are you talking about? What the happen is if you get a sick all over with the eyes of the nose of the feet of the throat, everything. Who are you gonna see then? The insurance company. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm now, gonna wait, go wait, to wait, the... wait, Luigi. Your trouble is you don't sleep, right? That's right. Then. Your body feels like it to sleep, but your head is obstinate, right? Yeah, that's right. Then, then. if you obstinate, there's only one doctor for you. Obstetrician. <laughs> Obstetrician? That's all right, and I'm going to send you to a good one, Luigi. Are you sure he's a good one, Pasquale? Don't worry, I sent him six customers. He's a never yet to fail to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of fellow he is. Oh, good. Then, then, then what am I sure to tell him, Pasquale? Well, you got to talk very strict to an American doctor, Luigi. Right away, you tell him, Doctor, I'm expecting that you should cure me for my sleeplessness. <laughs> doctor, I'm expecting a. No, no, should've... wait, wait, Luigi. Just to cut it short, he knows. Uh, <laughs> when you get to the obstetrician, just say, uh, Doctor, I'm expecting. <laughs> like this, uh, Doctor, I'm expecting. Good. <laughs> now you tell him that, just so like you said it to me. Here, I'm going to write down his address. Oh, thank you, Pascal. Uh, but, Pascal, you think that this doctor, he's going to help me out? Luigi, I guarantee you, when you tell him what your trouble is, this doctors are going to help you right out. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Basco, is this visit in reference to your wife? No, 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 I'm, I'm a got to no wife. Oh, a friend? No, he's about me. What? All right, Miss Phillips. Go right in, Mr. Basco. Dr. Hart will see you now. Thank you, Miss. Now then, Mr. Basco, how can I help you? Hello, Doctor, you, you, up, 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 a situation? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm expecting it. <laughs> You're expecting it. That's right, that's all right. I'm expecting a... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sleep tonight. Uh, 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 look here. Uh... No, please, please. Examine me. Examine me. You're going to see. No, no, no. There, there. No, no. You just, just calm down, my good man. No, but a doctor, I'm, I'm going to you help very bad. Oh, pitiful. Uh, psychoneurotic. Psychoneurotic? <laughs> I'm going to help you, Mr. Basco. Uh, excuse me, please. All right. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, Dr. Barron? Uh, Phil, uh, this is Nat. Uh, look, I'm sending you a patient. Uh, he's a psycho. Uh huh. <laughs> Quite far gone. <laughs> Harmless. Uh, mother complex, perhaps. <laughs> no, I don't think he's trying to avoid the draft board. <laughs> uh, look, uh, give him the once over, will you, Phil? Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, Mr. Basco, uh, I want you to go down to a third floor doctor's uh, office. Room 319. Dr. Barron will take good care of you. That's nice. What the, what the, what, what, what the kind of doctor is this place? Well, he's a kind of psychiatrist, what we call an alienist. Alienist? Ah, oh, sure. Why am I for the Pasquale is not send me to this alienist in the first place? Are you... You believe you should go to an alien? Oh, well, sure. Ask the specialist who's to take care of the alien, is it? <laughs> Dr. Barron, I'm... Well, is it four months since I'm not sleeping in uh, Mr. Basco, 
Will you lie down on this couch, please? <laughs> lie down on the couch? Yes, yes. Just lie down on the couch. All right, but uh, you want to take the shoes off of first? No, time. no, no, no. Just relax. There. Right. there. Now tell me, what's troubling you? Well, uh, like I'm a set of doctor, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sleep in a night. I but... see. Do you have financial worries? Huh? Are you in need of money? Mamma mia, you finance a company, too, huh? <laughs> No, no, Mr. Basco. I'm just trying to get at the root of your trouble. That's the origin, the very beginning of your trouble, usually found in childhood. Now, let's start at the beginning. Were there many children in your family? Just to me. You were alone? No, I was with my mom. <laughs> I mean, were you an only child? Well, not exactly. What do you mean? Well, I was Uncle Pietro's a goat. <laughs> you see, I'm a lover him like like he's a belonger to the family. I see. He took the place of a brother, is that right? Sister, he was a girl a goat. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, go on. What else do you remember from your childhood? Well, uh... We was to uh, have a little farm, beautiful little farm. And it was, uh, it was all a fill up with the chickens and the roosters, and one a pig and, and one a cow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, then uh, one day, I remember, was, uh, well, maybe I was uh, 70 years old, and, uh, and my mama, uh, my mama is uh, sending me out to milk the cow for the first time. Yes, yes, go on. What happened? I'm a tiptoe out into the barn. Yes. Cow was sleeping. Go on. Someone tried to milk her anyway. And what happened? Suddenly, cows wake up and she's a holler so much, I'm going to let her keep her the milk. <laughs> Hmm. I'd better make a note. Cow incident. Emotional shock. Possible I can spell, Mr. Basco. Possible Freudian trauma. Maternal guilt complex. Atavistic behaviorism. No, please, doctor, use the little words. I'm not going to afford the bigger ones. <laughs> Don't worry about my fees, Mr. Basco. Now then, think back. Do you remember anything around the age of two or three? Some bad dreams, perhaps? Two or three bad dreams. Yes, once I'm a dream, Mrs. Talazzo's a dog was a pull me around the room by my little night ago. Mm-hmm. A childhood neurosis that manifested itself in the unconscious state. No, I don't think so. When I'm woke up, there was the dog pulling me around the room. <laughs> Well, go on. What else stands out from your early childhood? Well, nothing but a beautiful, a beautiful memories and green grass, flowers, uh, me running around with no shoes, fishing by the lake, catching little butterflies, uh, sleeping in the field, uh, till my mom is calling me in for the supper. Mr. Vasco, you long to return to your childhood, don't you? That's a good trick, doctor, but I don't think you could do it. <laughs> Mr. Basco, try to understand. You have a mother complex, and I'm trying to get at the cause. Tell me, as a child, did you play with dolls? No, no, no. Are you sure? Doctor, when I was a little, I was a little boy, not a little girl. Mr. Basco, <laughs> think. Did you love your mother? Yes, sir. Did you hate your father? No. Did you always sleep well? Yes, sir. Did you? Yes. I mean, no. Did you hate your father? No. Did you hate your mother? No. I mean, yes. I, I, Mr. Vasco, stop it. You're driving me crazy. Well, what do you think you're doing it to me? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm home. What's happening, Luigi? Look at you. Shirt hanging out, a face perspiring, a hair all wet. What happened? You went rowing in Lake Michigan without a boat? <laughs> Miss Dolly, I'm the worst day of my whole life. You was sending me to the opposite tradition. He's, he's sending me to Alien the Doctor. He's asking me hundreds of crazy questions. And the worst part of all, I'm, I'm still not the cure of my sleepless, listless, and essay. <laughs> Look, Luigi, don't give up. I just got the name of the biggest sleeper doctor in Chicago. No, no, Pasquale, no, no more doctors, thank you. But, Luigi, this doctor's got an MD. MD, what's that to mean? Makes dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it, you mean he, he could have make me sleep in the night, Pasquale? Could he? Luigi, this fella is such a big sleeper doctor, he could make you sleep for good. And he's in charge only a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars? Well, Pasquale, I'm a never could afford that. Thing. Would you stop? Are you good angel? Pasquale is going to give me you the money. Gonna get? Oh, Pasquale, thank you so much. Hey, now I'm gonna do you a little favor. 
Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> All right, little Scully. What's the favor? Marry Rosa? Hoo-hoo, you lucky pups, you. No, Pasquale, I'm a doctor. All right, all right, Luigi. Look, we're going to make a deal. If my doctor cures of you, you're going to say yes, all right? Well, uh, let me see. Well, first I sleep at the night, so then we're going to see. All right, that's a deal. I'm going to call in the future Mrs. Luigi and tell her, Rosa, Rosa, Rosa. Yes, my delicious little rye crisp. <laughs> Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> <know> Luigi. <laughs> hello, Rosa. Rosa, Luigi might consider you for his bride if we can cure his sleeplessness. Oh, well, Papa, what are you going to do? Well, I made a day that tomorrow at 3 o'clock I'm going to lay out a $100 and take Luigi to the sleep doctor. Oh, thank you. Thank you again, Pascal. You're really friendly. Oh, but, Papa, why wait till tomorrow afternoon? I can cure Luigi now. How? I can come in every night and bang him on the head with a hammer. Oh, shut up, you face. <laughs> Come on, Rosa. It's almost at three o'clock, and Luigi should be ready to go to that sleep doctor. But his door is closed, Papa. Well, so what? We open up. Luigi! Hey, Luigi! It's funny, I thought he'd be waiting for us. Maybe he's in the kitchen, Papa. Now, come on, and we look for him in the back. <laughs> Papa, look! Luigi's asleep! Sleep? Must have got us so tired he finally fell asleep. Hey, Luigi, Luigi, wake up. <laughs> what the... <laughs> oh, it's a Get up, Luigi. You must have dozed off on your feet. No, no, I was... Uh, I was just taking my little afternoon nap. What? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but now I'm ready to go to the sleep, Doctor. Wait you, a minute, wait a minute. Did you say afternoon nap? Well, sure, I'm going to take it every day. Every day? For how many hours? Oh, from... Uh, from a one to five. <laughs> you mean you've been asleep in four hours every day and you think you've got a trouble? Well, sure, that's what I told you. My bigger trouble is I'm not going to sleep in the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scully, wh- where are you going? And, and you taking me to the sleep doctor? No, Luigi, go yourself. Yeah, but where are you going? I'm going to the psychiatrist. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that you can enjoy the comfort and satisfaction of chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum just about any time or any place. Chew a stick whenever you feel tense or need a little refreshing lift. Enjoy Wrigley's Spearmint on the job, in your home, and when you're on the go. It always tastes good. And the smooth, pleasant chewing helps keep you feeling at ease and satisfied. So slip a package of refreshing, delicious, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum into your purse or pocket. Keep some handy all the time and enjoy it often, as millions of people do. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco and Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson, and Hal March as the Doctor. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network. Tonight at 9, Ken...